You know, I like this Bill Maher guy. Is he perfect? No. He said some some dumb things. He said if, you know, uh, the economy is going to help Trump, so bring on the recession or something like that. Not, no, no, please, no. But Bill Maher is a liberal who regularly calls out the insanity of, you know, the Democrats are going off the deep end, right? And, 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 and I, I'm, this is what my video was about yesterday on my main channel, that the unhinged left is becoming mainstream. And this uh, s- the story started because... I saw this article about a woman who threw, a, uh, I believe it was a milkshake, some kind of drink at uh, Republican uh, Matt Gates. Turns out the woman ran as a Democrat uh, against Matt Gates. So, so, so we're, we're literally at a point where someone runs against Matt Gates and then three years later throws a, a drink at a milkshake or something at him. This is the state of, you know, where we're at with the Democrats. Okay, so, so things have gone crazy. Again, not all Democrats, because clearly someone like Bill Maher represents them in a, in a very high profile capacity. But he said this, according to Daily Wire. Bill Maher defends Trump merit-based immigration plan sounds more normal. He says it sounds more normal Republican. So let's let's clarify the thing. You know this here. Did did Bill Maher defend Trump's merit-based thing based on saying it sounds more no, normal Republican? I think if we're being fair, he's saying this is like rep- Republican behavior, a merit-based system. It's kind of a defense, but he was actually railing on Trump, saying that the tariff idea was was Trump crazy. And that this sounds more normal. So it's kind of a defense. The real defense came when Bill Maher said, it's kind of like what Canada has. You're not going to convince me that Canada is is conservative. No, no way. So if this is normal Republican and Bill Maher says it sounds like what Canada has, then merit-based immigration doesn't sound bad at all. But there was still someone on his show who pushed back against it. Bill Maher knows, he completely understands what the Democrats need to do in order to win. And he's repeatedly called out the wokeness of the left. So this is kind of like a follow up on the video I did yesterday for my main channel in that uh, part of this segment was Bill Maher telling the Democrats to get out of Wokeville, stop, you know, stand up to Twitter. It was hilarious. He was like, just because woke babe 99 is mad at you doesn't mean anyone cares. So let's read a little bit about this. And then I've got some other stories and I'm gonna give you a warning. There's one story I'm going to I'm going to be talking about that is going to uh, I'm not trying to be mean, but uh, uh, you, well, you've been warned. Just just you've been warned. Once again, Bill Maher of HBO has allowed some sense to spring forth from his usually irreverent mouth by acknowledging President Trump's merit-based immigration system as something worth achieving. Kind of, I think you know I, I think they Daily Wire definitely wants to be like Bill Maher's defending Trump. And it's kind of like, no, 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 it's kind of like a neutral statement, um, neutral to positive. I wouldn't say it wasn't Bill Maher jumping up and down saying Trump's right. They go on to say the political comedian made his surprising statement about the Trump administration's proposed immigration policy during the overtime segment on YouTube, which follows after his real time show on HBO. Maher first began by asking his panel of guests if a merit based immigration system should receive more consideration, not that it would be uh, similar to what Canada has. So that's, that's interesting. I mean, a lot of liberals talk about how great Canada is, right? So if can, and, and Canada does, if, I don't know if you've ever gone to their website, you like, you have to earn points or something. You have to have a certain degree of skills if you want to go to, uh, if you want a visa. CNN political analyst Kirsten Powers denounced the proposal for being out of line with the U.S. immigration, immigration tradition, which she claims has always been about people just coming to the country with no regard for their merit. This country is based on people coming over here, not not based on having a PhD or having high level skills. Even when we say merit based, it sort of suggests that someone who doesn't have a high education doesn't have merit. I think we need people who are unskilled laborers. We need them just as much as people who are engineers. Now, it is a problem when they, they do give you get you earn points in. in uh, I think New Zealand does this, too. If you have a college degree, a college degree does not guarantee you actually know what the hell you're talking about. And I think we all kind of understand that. So it's not perfect. But I understand the idea of a merit-based immigration system. Now, it's kind of funny. I'd probably score relatively low on a merit-based system, like if I was trying to go to Canada, because I have no high school diploma. I didn't go to college. However, I think there's certain criteria that would, you know, they, they recognize things beyond uh, just a degree. But I will push back on uh, Ms. Kirsten Powers. Two things. Just because things have always been this way does not mean they are the right things to do. That's actually a liberal position or a progressive position. She's saying it's out of line with U.S. immigration tradition. I understand when the country was very small, she talks about how her, her, I believe her grandparents or her her ancestors, whatever, came as coal miners. 
well, we don't really have that many coal miners anymore. So yes, there needs to be some kind of standard, especially when one of the biggest sectors of our economy is the tech sector. And technology is one of the, it's, it's a driving force for most developing economies. We're not as interested so much in a strong economy based on us digging dirt out of the ground as we are. How can we make a better piece of technology? Will it get us to the stars? Will it improve our lives? Yes, we need things like coal miners. Don't get me wrong. The point I'm trying to say is there's a reason why we are shift, you know, immigration policy changes. The world changes. Technology develops. So it's it's absolutely fascinating to me that we're at a point now where, where it's like, the religious zealotry that I grew up with seeing on the, on the conservative side is now appearing on the left. Tradition? <laughs> is that a joke? Why are you advocating for immigration tradition? Let's talk about how we protect lower class workers. What also ignores is that we got hit by, an, uh, and so the second point, we got hit by a massive economic recession. People in this country, some people have never recovered. Some people's wages haven't gone up. The economy is doing great, but there are still people hurting. And that means we shouldn't just open the floodgates for everybody to come in and displace those who haven't recovered yet. I'm not, and, and, and this is not even me doing a strong, like, America first thing. I certainly think asylum seekers should be given their legal course to asylum because saving someone's life is more important than figuring out if someone's going to be able to put their kid in college. I know that sounds a little bit harsh, but there are hard decisions to be made. If you had to choose between, I'm going to make sure that you, you know, are going to be able to uh, save money or, and this person is going to be left out and potentially die, I choose to save the life. But we need strong uh, uh, migration systems and laws and closing loopholes to prevent those from exploiting the asylum system. So as much as I made that point, let me be clear. There are a lot of people who do exploit the asylum system because they know they'll get apprehended, they'll claim asylum, they'll be released, and they'll never show up. Congratulations, they're in the country. I'm talking about legitimate people who are like quite literally going to die. Right. I think I think we can agree saving life, you know, um, trumps certain economic policies. But but to, to, to be fair on that point as well, I will stress the amount of people who actually need asylum probably wouldn't be displacing the average worker in this country. If you open the floodgates and just say, like and I don't I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but if you literally say anybody can come and anybody can work, you are literally displacing people and causing economic harm for no reason. That makes no sense. You know, they, they say, secure your own face mask before securing the mask of those sitting next to you. And that's why it's a sort of like, I, I would never say that I'm like an overt America first person, because I do think there are, there are certain things that, pro- that have priority outside of our borders, but I'm way more than probably the average progressive. And the reason for it, I think, is that many of these progressives are just tribalists. She's only saying this because it's anti-Trump. Even Bill Maher was like, oh, Canada has it. Bill, like Bill Maher isn't being insane about it. Okay, but let's let's move on from this. The, the interesting thing here is that, you know, I, I think it's fascinating all the time to see Bill Maher uh, is like, is like a, is, he's, he's a normal liberal and the, and the left has gone nuts. Bill Maher has repeatedly called this out last month. Bill Maher Democrats, if you make 2020 a woke contest, you lose. He's right. He's absolutely right. And now you've, you were warned earlier, but I'm going to tell you exactly how uh, I'm going to tell you exactly why a woke contest will lose. And I, I, I want to give you a kind of graphic warning. Um, it's going to put an image in your head that you're, you might not want, uh, uh, but you've been warned. In another story, Lena Dunham poses nude to promote positivity about loving yourself. That's fine. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Lena Dunham. I did not issue, I didn't say it was a warning because I'm trying to be mean to her about her appearance. It's just that there are some people who might not want to be thinking about something like this. And, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is that, by all means, I, I am a, a, a left libertarian, right? I am left liberal. So I believe in freedom. I am very anti-authoritarian. I do believe in more um, uh, left on the economic spectrum is more cooperative, right is more competitive. So I lean left. But I am very much about freedom. I mean, it's a very difficult position to have to convince people to work with you on certain issues without uh, a guarantee of, you know, a financial exchange. It's complicated. I don't want to get into all that stuff. The point is, you do you. You do you. If you want to post a photo of you naked, like, you, more power to you. But you have to recognize that people in this country think a certain way, okay? That there is a, a common, uh, um, that we, we, we still have some kind of common culture. What Lena Dunham is doing here, while the woke crowd may be like, oh, that's so sweet. The average person is going to be like, no, thank you. I'm not interested in seeing you pose naked. 
And these are the kind of things done by very high profile individuals aligned with the left that make the left seem out of their, out of their minds. What does, what does Joe Biden say? Something about white man's culture. They, they, you know, Joe Biden recently said something like the LGBTQ agenda is like his number one legislative priority. And I'm just like, listen, man, we want to guarantee civil rights for everybody. That's, that's a fact. But first and foremost, can we deal with the economy, foreign policy? Listen, I, I think it's fine that, and, and it's actually fantastic that we care about protecting marginalized communities. I'm all for it. But to come out there and do that overt virtue signal, I'm like, do you think that the 99, you know, 90, it's like 98 like percent or whatever of the population, 90, let's, let's just say 95. Let's, let's say, I think it's a really high estimate, but let's say 95 percent of the population that is like straight, you know, cisgendered, whatever, doesn't really pay attention to politics. You think they're going to be like excited about you coming out and saying this? Or are they going to be like, what does that have to do with whether or not my factory is going to reopen? What does that, what does that have to do with whether or not I'm going to have health care? Th- seriously, Joe Biden's priority is LGBTQ rights over health care. That to me sounds insane. And I'm not saying we shouldn't prioritize LGBTQ rights. No, by all means, it should be way up there. But you think health care would come first because health care is for everybody. No. Nope. Joe Biden says this. Why? Because I think, you know, he's trying to play to the woke crowd. Well, Bill Maher warned you about that. I'll warn you about that. I've been warning you about that. And even conservatives have been warning you about that. What Lena Dunham is doing is not overtly political, but she is a very prominent person leaning in a political direction and makes many political statements and have, has done many, many controversial things. She wants, it's my understanding, I, don't, I, I could be wrong, but my, I, I remember she said something about how she wished she had an abortion. What do you think happens when regular Americans in like, you know, I don't know, Illinois hear that? They think, wow, these people are losing it. And then Trump wins. Remember this? Grab them by the ballot. Naked photo shoot of women to encourage people to vote for Democrats. They removed all the photos. It's an old story. This was back from what? uh, When was this story? November 3rd. I think it was 20. Was it 2018? Yeah, midterm elections. What were they thinking? A bunch of women posing nude to encourage people to vote. Trump right now is absolutely dominating. Okay, I I might do a bigger video on this later because this is a really interesting article. But Trump is absolutely destroying the competition in terms of his his campaign for re-election. He is outspent. Look at this: Obama, Bush, Clinton, and H. W. Bush. Look how much Trump has spent, raised and spent. So he's still got money left over, but he is spending like crazy. What is that? Like five times the amount Obama spent for re-election. This is nuts. Look at this. 8.3 million. And Elizabeth Warren coming in second place at 1.7. Trump is outspending and destroying everybody. The Republicans absolutely know their messaging. And Bill Maher said this on his show. He said, get your message straight. But there's too many people running and they're knifing each other in the throat. So here we are. Here we are with Lena Dunham getting naked and talking about body positivity and all that stuff. And, and again, more power to you. Do your thing. I have no problem. And I'm not trying to be mean to Lena Dunham, but in, in no way. Uh, I have tremendous respect for her. It's, it's very brave for her to do this photo shoot. The point I'm trying to stress, though, is that as a high profile person aligned with the Democrats, who's a very prominent supporter of Hillary, these kinds of things are bad for the Democrats. Certainly the woke crowd will disagree. But I don't, I'm not here to pander to the woke crowd. I'm here to talk to regular Americans. And if there is someone who is an independent, leans a little left, votes Democrat traditionally, maybe switch to Trump, who knows? I mean, you, you, you probably get it. You probably completely understand. Hopefully, you know, I mean, I, I guess it's, it's, it's almost kind of pointless to bring up because, yeah, I assume if you're watching me, you get it. You understand exactly why what she does and what these other women are doing is hurting the Democrats. You, you understand exactly why Bill Maher is right when he says, don't make it a woke contest, you'll lose. They've gone off the deep end. They're chasing after a fringe portion of the population that's like less than 8%, if that. And for some reason, they think it's the majority. And it's going to cost them. So anyway, to wrap this all up, I mean, the premise is Bill Maher has repeatedly defended Trump. I find it absolutely fascinating when he does this. And I'm actually curious on what you all think about the merit-based immigration plan, because I don't really see anything wrong with it. Whether or not you, you know, the Democrats want to oppose it or challenge it, I'm, I'm flabbergasted that on the panel, the tradition was the argument she used. I, I'm not a traditionalist. So no, that doesn't speak to me. I, I am much, there's progressive and there's tradition, right? That's ridiculous to me. I suppose 
The true progressive line would be no, no borders, right? That's the true progressive. Well, you can't do that. That to some, just because it's progressive doesn't mean it makes sense. But saying, just going straight up with tradition, uh, the tradition of we used to just let anybody in. It's like, right. And we used to have a wild west frontier with like nobody in it. Now we have big cities from sea to shining sea. And we want to make sure we protect the people who have, who, who have paid into and helped support the system that keeps us safe. That working class family in Idaho and Ohio and Michigan, when they've been paying taxes and providing for the common defense, supplying resources that allow the United States to exist, I believe they deserve to be taken care of. So it's a, so, it's, it's, it's a very much so uh, uh, America first policy. Again, what I, I'll stress what I said earlier, that I believe legitimate asylum cases will take, will take uh, priority because we want to save lives. But if it comes to letting someone in the country to get a job, uh, so, sorry, dude, you know, we've got people here who need jobs. So anyway, I'll leave it there. Thanks for hanging out. More segments to come. The next one will be at 1 p.m. on this channel. For those of the podcast, it will begin shortly, and I will see you all in the next story.